All right, guys, we got a special guest in today. We've got Ned McPherson, who is my bro. Let's not. <laughs> what's, he's really my bro. Okay. Spoiler alert. We know each other. Uh, one of the first guys I met in Miami. Uh, Ned has scaled up a digital growth agency, Enrock Growth, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue. Yeah, yeah. What we're going to talk about is that it didn't start like that. Yeah. It started with experimentation. It started with a, a check that you received that you were like, wait, um, thanks for the money. I don't have the business built yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think the agency model, model is something that if you're looking to start making money, you've got some, you've got some skill. That's the quickest, fastest path there. Uh, Ned's business is focused around the growth hacking model, basically looking at e-commerce companies, tearing down their businesses from an analytic standpoint, figuring out what's going on and then going in there and solving those solutions. So I was so excited when Ned agreed to come on and do this because he's he's the guy, he's been a mentor for me and he's the guy that's gonna shoot this, this straight and, and you can pick his brain basically. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the company itself founded about six years ago. Um, they have a background in statistics and I wanted to focus on uh, at the time, helping business scale, help like understanding their data and what that meant, right? And it was a very broad offering, and I basically just did it on the side. I was running a another company with a couple business partners, and that was you know moving along and and and, and doing what it was. Uh, you know, we were, we were moving not that fast, but we were growing. And I started to kind of get into some of these different groups. I was actually part of a Vistage group, which is a uh, Vistage. It's like an organization for CEOs of companies, okay. right? It's kind of like a junior version of YPO type of thing. Um, and I had talked about this success that we had had with the company and how I, at the time, was using Google Analytics to attribute certain uh, successes to certain consumer cohorts and this and that. Real, qu real quick, guys, what, what Ned's referring to is uh, e-commerce companies spit off a ton of data. Yeah, yeah. And most business owners, the people that own the e-commerce companies, have no idea what it means. None. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought they did. Right. I thought they did. Right. And so I started talking about it. And this gal that was in my group was like, hey, could you do that? Could you do something like that for us? Right. You know, Reviewing the data and making sense out of it. Yeah. And she had an e-commerce business. So I dug right in and produced a report. And they were like, no one's done a report like this before. And I, I thought it was kind of standard. Mm. And so I started to do more of those and then, you know, got a few more referrals and I suddenly started to build up. And now my side hustle became bigger than my, my main business. Right quickly so the writing was on the wall and so by nature what it's grown into now what we are is we're a full service consumer analytics and growth agency so our job is to work with either digitally native or businesses that have heavy uh direct to consumer digital you know basically like a website right, right. e-commerce site that's a heavy component of their um omni-channel revenue stream our job is to study the funnel data, the consumer lifecycle data, try to understand patterns with intrafunnel conversion rates, trying right. to understand AOV patterns, trying to do some more advanced cohort analyses or even build out uh, predictive analytics models to say, how can we get you to grow faster? That's what it's all about. Right? Grow That's faster, make more fucking money. Yeah, grow faster, make right. more money. And like, what's the metric that matters right now? And a lot mm -hmm. of times I'll work with some of these brands. I've, you know, I've got a few brands that are household names as an example. And I I've dug into their data. And first off, I find that there's like, you know, the data itself is super non-hygienic. We end up having to tear things down, build what what are called like custom ETL schemas to basically extract their data, transform it properly, and mm -hmm. then load it, and then actually be able to like query that data to get right. some reasonable and rational information out of it. And these are these are big brands. They're doing 120, 150, 160 million on their website a year on top of retail presence. So these right. are you know these are pushing billion dollar valuation brands, if not greater. Um, and just finding that like the fundamentals aren't even there. Right. from a data perspective. So then we'll get in and then we'll analyze, find unique things that we're like, that's interesting. You know, like female iOS users are super under indexed here. Right. What do you bet if we experiment with a new personalization there or a new, you know, launch an A-B test, we might be able to move that metric right. and then we'll do that. And so then the team will execute on it. We'll move that metric and then we move on to the next. So it's like test to test, metric to metric, constantly empirically backed, super hypothesis rich, right? Um, but it's all based around their data right. and, and just the number of businesses out there that, that are actually data centric is very, very the right fun. way. Yeah. yeah. So let, let, just to bring this, to bring this down to earth a little bit, it's the biggest businesses, the business, you walk down the street, you walk in the design district here in Miami, the biggest businesses, right? Half of their presence is online mm -hmm. and even they 
don't understand their data. Yeah, well, two right. of the businesses in Design District are my clients. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these are, again, household names. Right. That, like, I mean, if you go on their website right now, you, like, a lot of the experiences you'll see with features, functionality, personalization is based on what my team is doing. Okay. You know? Yeah. And you got to this point. Mm-hmm. Which is where we're 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 right here, we're right yeah. now. We're talking about this right now. But you got to this point through a effectively an accident. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Yeah, sure. And, and and the the important thing to note here is if you have the awareness, right? So Ned clearly inter- interested in this type of problem solving, sensitive to the way that 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 ecom companies collect data. If you have this awareness, just about yourself, right? run that experiment and turn that thing potentially into a conversation and then potentially after the conversation into a, into your first paycheck. Yeah. Um, which is, which, which I, I said before you got the paycheck before you had the freaking business built. Yeah. Right. And that is what we're going to dive into because there is no golden road to getting everything working out perfectly. There is no briarless path where you're just floating towards success. It is a completely crazy iterative shit show of a process to be an entrepreneur. Um, and th- that's hopefully what I, I wanna push out in this conversation yeah, let's between do you and I. Uh, I'm gonna let you kind of walk through that business model. Yeah. Um, but first, let's just, how do we know each other? How do we know each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was, uh, where were we? Yeah, mutual friend. Classic. Mutual friend, yeah. Over in Miami, we are going to a couple of years ago, right before COVID hit. Right. Yeah, and there was some big art event in Miami, and, you know, just kind of a two, two, two young bulls about two, Miami two, running around right. at the time. The two wild men in the, in yeah. the woods. Well, that's actually what other. Spencer said, our buddy. He called me, and he was like, I met your match. And I'm like, doubt it. And he's like, I met your match. And he's like, you got to come out with us tonight. Okay, Friends right. are important, yeah. everybody. Yeah. So so Ned and I met at a networking event, basically some gallery party where you yeah. sit around and drink yep. cheap wine and pretend you're fancy. Um, but what I thought was cool about, about Ned is I knew he was plugged in to the scene in Miami. I knew he had a great business. And so for me, that was that was super interesting. Probably, you're probably one of the first people I met um, here in Miami. And like, I feel like when you're in hustle mode, this is something I wanted to t- dive into. It's like, when you're fully in hustle mode, you stop hanging out with friends, you stop networking. Yeah, big time. You, when you started your agency, like, let's talk about how hardcore you were working yeah. in that in those in that first stretch yeah yeah i mean it definitely went through an evolution i mean i i, I think the best example of that was 2018 so to give a little backstory on it i started the agency towards the tail end of 2016. Um, i had done it honestly non-incorporated i just had some people who were asking me for a particular service i have a background in statistics Honestly, I dove real deep into the world of consumer analytics and trying to understand consumer patterns and why certain people were better archetypes for other companies than others and, and, and started to help a few businesses on the side. A couple of them offered to pay, kind of was sharpening my knife when I was a little bit younger and that turned into this little side hustle, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really incorporated it towards the end of 2016. 2017 was an interesting year, uh, to say the least. I um, got myself in a lot of debt to be honest, uh, mm-hmm. made a lot of wrong decisions, um, had an, an immediate growth curve right out of the gates where I got this initial client, they were paying me like 2,500 bucks a month. And I was like, oh, this is cool, it's a little side money. I'd already had another company I was running with some business partners at the time, and mm-hmm. that was chugging along. Um, and then they referred me to another, so I got a second one. Now I had like a little 5K on the side. I'm like, okay, this is becoming meaningful. And then I closed a 7,000 a month one. Okay. So now all of a sudden I've got six figures well, what should be six figures on an annualized basis right. as a side hustle. And I'm like, okay, writing's on the wall. There's a demand here. I'm getting, at the time, not realizing service market fit, right? Which is the equivalent of product market fit. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, but I started to see that there was, you know, the writing was on the wall and that there was a demand for this. So I want to slow you down one second, yeah. just because what what everyone needs to like hear about this story is you know, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, like you're doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everyone, yeah, yeah. this is a humble beginning story, which started with one scrappy client, basically, hey, I have a skill, I know how to do X, and people start to ask me to do it. Yeah. Oh, I can charge a little bit bit of money, yeah. and that maybe you charge a little bit more, Yeah. right? And now you have your third client, now it's this, this is a, f- a full, you yeah. know, a full rate, 
right. closer to what you would say, I'm a real business. I get to charge my big $7,000, $10,000 a month, whatever it is. Right, right. So in the beginning, not pretty. Right. Not, not elegant. at all, no. <laughs> fucking fucked up. Right. This is what I want people to hear about this story. Yeah. Now we can yeah. jump back into it because I think everyone has this idea that you, uh, uh, you just all of a sudden go from like having this skill set to just smoothly ramping up, you know, from twenty five to fifty thousand to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars a month in revenue, and that it, couldn't be further no, from the truth. For early stage entrepreneurs, couldn't be further from the truth. It's it's the it's the exact opposite of that. Now, late stage entrepreneurs have refined the model so well, and they know. And probably the key, I guess, maybe uh, ethos that I could talk about today is my number one saying in business. What I always back into is build what you can sell. Honestly, it's the most important thing. So yeah. many people, it's like, you're all great at building shit, whether you're an app developer, whether you're a designer, whether you got the gift of gab, whatever, everybody can build something. Try to sell it first. See if there's a legitimate demand before you actually go build something of value. So seasoned entrepreneurs who have done this before have mastered that skill, right? Absolutely mastered that skill. And not to sell digress. it before you build it. Absolutely. Not yeah. to digress too much, but I, I created a second company where it's, it's a solutions company that, that has a line of affinity to what I do now. Um, but long short, without getting into the intricacies of what the company does, I took my own medicine on it. And this was about two years ago. Um, actually, yeah, right before COVID hit. So I guess it was about three years ago. And I was pitching it to two of my clients as an ancillary service, as a tack on, it was a whole nother company. And I was very straightforward with them. This is a different business. At one point, I closed the first deal, and Brett, who was the, my first client, was giving me a check in advance, mm -hmm. and he said, what do I make the check out to? I hadn't created the name of the company yet. Right. Dude, I hadn't even thought of the name of the company, let alone incorporate it, let alone all the bullshit people. It's like nothing. It's like I got all the way to the point where there was a check in hand, and I was like, wait a second. Yeah, Maybe I, I should like, put a head, title like, on this yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's, so that's an example of building what you can sell. That's building what you can sell. And it's also not dressing up in your dad's suit when you're a kid. Right. It's like doing business yeah. in real life, as opposed to, I got my lawyer and I got the LLC yeah. and I did all the things I was supposed to do to feel like I'm doing business. Exactly. No, doing business, it's not pretty. You don't open the little instruction manual. Right. It starts organically like this and it and it starts with when that fucking first check comes. Exactly. Then you're in business. Right, because you've got to Before, no, you're, you're not in business. No. You're experimenting. You're exper yeah, it's a good way to put it. You're experimenting. Will the market buy what you're offering, whether it's service-based, product-based, et cetera? And again, there is the graveyard of applications and SaaS products out there that yeah. never took off that had tremendous product development went into them. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is they put all this effort in and then realize no one gave a shit. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oops, kind of did that one backwards, didn't we? They raised venture capital, et cetera. Ain't God forbid angel investors, friends and family right. rents who don't have a clue. They're just investing. And in everyone gets point. screwed, not just you and your co-founder. Now your mom, dad, and the guys next door and the in investment bank get screwed. The people in Silicon Valley, and the worst money. of all, the future you get screwed. Cause right. the next time you actually do do this right and you go back to the pool or back to the well for money, you're asking the people you already burned in a way, right. right? So it's like, be very cautious on how you're gonna do this, right? So building what you can sell is critical, right? I'm all, I'm all in on that. And I learned that even more from watching how you were running your business, also from watching how you were running so much testing yeah. with everything. Yeah. Uh, because really sell it before you can build it. That's, that's, that's one of the, it's downside protection. You're like, I'm not investing anything in this, but time. Yeah. I'm not pulling anyone else in this but yeah. myself. So you've you've basically you've you've insulated yourself from yeah. a lot of risk and you're trying to get closer to the truth as quickly as possible. Yeah. And if you don't, no one gets hurt. Yeah. Right? You lose a few months of your life, yeah. you sleep on a freaking blow up mattress yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Start exactly. over. Exactly. I mean, I got a, a, a mutual friend of ours actually who's been asking me for some advice as of late as to like he's got a couple ideas with companies he wants to start and he's like, should I do that? And it's like, dude go to a bar, go to wherever you think your consumer archetype is. And when somebody, the next person says, Hey, what do you do? Test. Right. And say something different to every fucking person who right. asks you and watch. When watch. their eyes light yes, up like exactly. a Christmas tree. But yeah. Watch what their eyes do. Watch what their body language. Oh, that's super interesting. How did you come up with that? And pay attention to questions. If they're engaging you with questions, 
Now you've at least got a fish right. on the hook that like maybe you do have product or service market fit and then validate. So it's like, okay, now that you've got a little uh, feedback from the marketplace, so to speak, that maybe they would buy it, now start to flirt with price points, start to flirt with this and that. Ideally do what I do, go all the way to the point where someone's like, okay, here's a check. Right. And then get all the rest of the bullshit figured out after that. Right. So, so I mean, nothing's more important than this. So kind of like circling back to our conversation, seasoned entrepreneurs get it. Right. They get it for them. Yeah, it really is that smooth. But the new entrepreneur, man, you got to just hack it at first. You right. really do. And then again, you're in that that just elusive pursuit of product or service market fit. Mm -hmm. And and the the best example, kind of the best little metaphor I ever heard for this, when you have product or service market fit, it's going to feel like you're chasing a boulder down a hill mm -hmm. trying to catch it. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, it's going to feel like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. Right. So if right now in your business or whatever you're doing, et cetera, if it feels like, man, this sucks every day it's a push it's so hard to get a client it's not a good sign right you may need to like honestly pull chocks and, and try something different P pivot or switch. it doesn't necessarily mean hey i'm i'm done with the age i'm done with this agency i'm done playing guitar i'm done it's like well no tweak it a little bit yeah right just course right? correct course correct course correct yeah and honestly i my model was totally i shouldn't no, i'm sorry it wasn't totally different i had packaged it differently at first and then i made a few really critical tweaks and that's when we really took off after yeah. that but again constantly testing so you know, again, like in the beginning, yeah, hacked it, absolutely trying different things. But like my biggest problem then, which still in a large parts is still the biggest problem today is meeting client demand. That's how you know you got product market fit. I can't keep up with their demand and I'm constantly trying to find ways to hire. I mean, we have 63 people on the team now. Mm -hmm. I got a pretty big employee base. It's like it's, it's a lot, man, you know, but again, even with this many people, it's constantly clients are trying to get more of you trying right. to get more of your information trying to get more of your intellect trying to get more of your attention etc right. which is your scarcest asset at the end of the day and that's again it's like okay yeah we got product market fit we got service market fit now we just got to figure out all the rest right systematizing getting basically making sure you're insulated and only making the decisions that only you can make yeah right yeah so before I walked in, because I was late, like a jackass, uh, stuck in classic Miami traffic. <laughs> uh, so uh, producer Andrew's chilling with with Ned here, and he's just kind of like, hey, how did you know, like when did you know and how did you know that you wanted to be, to go a different path here, mm -hmm. that you wanted to go in, in the independent route of being an entrepreneur as opposed to joining McKinsey or whatever, Goldman Sachs or whatever example you want to use. When did you know that? And then how did you know that? What's the, what's the story there? Because it sounds like I missed something really cool. And I'm sure every, you know, everyone wants to hear, yeah. hear this story. Yeah. Well, I mean, looking back on it now, what it was was just this like desire to hustle, you know, like we talked on. Mm -hmm. And I'd had that in college. And I just honestly, college was an interesting experience for me, man. I had, a, I had a great time. It was fun. I made some great relationships. I was in a fraternity the whole nine. It was it was a lot of fun. But about like halfway through, it was like, all right, I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm ready. I'm ready to go out into the world and to cut my teeth and to claw and to try to grow and win. Okay. Um, and I just, it really, you know, I didn't think I needed the full four years to be honest. Right. And I'm not necessarily encouraging people to, uh, to, you know, drop out early or anything like that. Uh, had I had the opportunity to, I would have okay. in full transparency. Yeah. Much to the dismay. Of I wouldn't have, I was like, I'm good here. Yeah. This is pretty sweet. Oh, I was ready to go man. Okay. real quick. Yeah. Okay. Freshman year was great. Sophomore year started to feel by junior. Year, I was like, I'm ready to go. So I, um, you know, I kind of, you know, started reading a lot, to be honest, started reading more like personal development books and things like the classic stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And this and that. Uh, and like all things, opportunities will come across your way. You just have to know how to identify them and then take advantage of them aggressively. And so at the time, uh, I got pitched on a network marketing company when I was in college. That's translation. That is a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> that is what that means. So I selling scissors. I, or I didn't, I didn't know. No, it was, a, it was a business selling, um, uh, deregulated energy and telecom services. Oh, right? that's like scissors for people from Boston. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. I was like, this right. is incredible. I was like, you can build a team and they'll support you and you'll get residual income. And I did right. all the math and built my projections and then all this and that. And I was like, I want to do this. So I went, and I pitched my parents. I was like, I heard about this business. You'll never believe this. And they're laughing at me the whole time because yeah, like, they're like, a scam. Yeah, they sweetheart. were like, they were like, you know, cause again, you know, this is like, there's a million of these things right. out there. Right. We and won't so, name names, but I can rattle off right. like 10. And right my now. parents, when they were super young in their 20s, did like Amway, this right. and that. So they knew the drill and they're laughing at me, this and that. But they were so encouraging. They were like, do it. 
go learn, do it, this and that. And I went like head first in. This is after you graduated or you're still in college? No, I was a sophomore. Okay. So college, at this yeah. point I am like learning how many kegs I could fit in my jeans. Yeah. I was like, 19. Like while you're doing this. Yeah. Like, just 19, to, 20. I don't know. Something okay, like that. Just yeah. want to set the stage here. I, I, I remember I was under 21 cause I got an award and I couldn't go to the, the cause I couldn't drink yet cause you needed to show your ID. But you're like, sorry, dork. You yeah, can't come. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just give the award to someone else. Yeah. But nonetheless, so I started with it and, uh, like, look, I, I made money with it. Not that much, right. but like, I mean, for a kid in college, it's like your this, network or, marketing dreams. Yeah. When you're a kid in college and you know, every month you get anywhere between a 500 and a $2,500 check. It's a nice little taste. Crazy, man. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. That's great. And so, uh, I made a little bit of money, but that's who cares. Honestly, the money had nothing to do with it. The point was, is you were in, you were transacting. Yeah. And I was learning how to become a gorilla entrepreneur. Okay. And. I'll be honest, if there's a, such an industry where you got to learn it, it's that mm -hmm. industry. Try cold marketing and network Direct sales and, in yeah. New York. Yeah. Like, dude. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, it was brutal. And like, right. I had these guys who were hot shots in the company and they had the, the cars and the houses and this and that. Right. And one of them was kind enough to mentor me at the time, kind of took me under his wing. This guy, Mike, and he, uh, it's, it's a pair of brothers, man. They're, they're still to this day, we're really close friends. And, you know, he had told me one point, I'm like 21 at this point. I think I just graduated college. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going to make my money. I already know it. And this right. company, I was really ingrained in. And uh, he had this huge ass pad right outside New York. And he let me uh, stay at his place in one of the guest bedrooms Critical. for a month. Critical to meet night. these types of people to give you a little taste. Yeah. But I told him, I was like, I'll yeah. do what it takes. And he was like, <laughs> the first night, dude, I remember he went, he had to run out to something. He left his journal uh -huh. on the kitchen counter, which okay. had all his planning for okay. the month. Dude, it, it looked like hieroglyphics. You couldn't fit another really ink. like you couldn't there was everything notes and meetings and this and that. And at the top, he had carved into this page work harder. And I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this dude, and this dude was big time. Like they made yeah. millions. And I was like, that's really intense. And that was the first moment where it kind of hit me in the face that like, oh, the big guys really hustle hard. Right. This isn't accidental. No, that he's not. Mike is living in the sweet pad and yeah. Jersey City, wherever, where, 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 Hoboken. I don't remember. It was, he had this huge penthouse overlooking the city, but okay. on the Jersey side. Yeah, Hoboken. One of, it was he's in Hoboken. Edgewater, one of those. So Hoboken yeah. Mike isn't just fell into some sweet, you know, no, you know, NYC yeah. skyline the view. number one in the company. The company had hundreds of thousands of reps around the world. And right. I mean, they were a big, if I said the name, some people might know the name. So the, like, the dude's a savage and you basically found his notebook and realized and how realized, deep it went. Yeah. And I thought this guy was on easy street mm -hmm. and it couldn't have been any further from the truth. Interesting. So, so that was the first thing. Night two, he sat me, we had already gone through this thing during the day. It was like eight, nine PM at night. I was like, oh, it was a good day. He goes, you're not finished. And Mike's an intense dude. Right. And he goes, if you don't make a hundred cold calls tonight, you're not sleeping in the house. You're sleeping in the Escalade out front. Really? Yeah, that's what he said to me. Swear to God. And I was like, ha ha. He goes, I'm not joking. That's And amazing. I was like, dude, I was like, I, I was Andrew, watch scared. out, man. I'm getting ideas. I was kind of scared, but I was just like <laughs> super fired up at the moment. And I'm like, this is what training looks like. Right. You know? And again, I, whatever you want to say, I got lucky, fell into that position or it was opportunistic. I put myself in that position. Well, it but, sounds like you, you were seeking this type of character. Yeah, I think so. Right. And it kind of came to me and I took advantage of it because right. I came to him to be like, to me, is there any chance I can work under you for a month? And he, and, there you, go. you know, saw something in me and then right. that happened. So, uh, and then, you know, long story short, I didn't stay in the company to be honest, obviously, because I've gone on and done many other things since then, right. but that I learned so many lessons and that company. And to this day, I would say the majority of the real lessons that I employ every single day are not my ability to run a regression. It's my ability to interact with people that I learned from that company. Hmm. It Be is, it was an incredible experience. And, and getting this guy in your ecosystem was like t w taking the leap of faith and just being like, man, I'll just, I'll do, I'll, just tell me what to do. I'll yeah. show up at any time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I had done, you know, like, you know, played sports at a pretty high level and done the whole, you know, training camps and this and that. And so I'd like been through it. Mm -hmm. This was on another level. next level. So, yeah. Mentally, it was on enough physically, obviously not, but mentally it was on another level. Right. Yeah. So you got your first taste of what it's like to actually get out there and grind. And you had a mentor to really be like, oh, well, yeah. I got the first taste, thankfully, to see what the daily habits were of a top producer. Right. I think is the best way to put it. Yeah. Right. And they were nothing like I thought they were. 
it was not. There were ten times, and, and it, like we were saying, right. and, and it's not lattes know. and ch- and champagne in, in the evenings. No. Yeah, I, and I, and these guys. I mean, he had a brother, and they they both did really well. And like, don't get me wrong, they partied and they vacation hard, and they had an awesome lifestyle. But right. boy, did they work! Oh, oh my god, yeah. And you know what? It's like it's like if we feel like we're pulling the rug out of people listening to this. It's like, but it's like you know what? That's part of the fun here. Yeah, this is what's going to make you tougher, smarter. It's going to enrich every other area yeah, of your yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, I was. I, I mean, I. I. My on ramp was like, my on ramp was completely insane, and I st- t- was like drinking from the fire hose, so to speak, and I did not take to it the way that you took to it yeah. so quickly. It took me like, like years. Yeah. To, to get comfortable. I just was like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. This is cool. But I just like, I didn't equip myself to, to go and start to grind straight away. So it took me much longer. I needed to get my, I need to get my ass kicked yeah. for years before I was like, oh. Get your ass kicked and then learn how to kick your own ass, by the way, is another right. big one. He said something to me when I was down. I had just <laughs> gotten like, my ass kicked. Learn how to kick your own ass, okay. <laughs> but I had gotten my ass kicked with some cold marketing thing, or whatever, and I was bitching in the car, like, it was like 11 p.m. at night, whatever. I was coming from these things I was pitching at. And uh, I was like, I said something to, and uh, I said something to the fact that I was like, why can't these people get it? Like, why can't mm-hmm. it be easier for them to understand? And he just looks at me and goes, why can't you be better? I was like, yeah. Dude, we got to get Mike on the yeah, podcast. Why, why can't, yeah, dude, Mike's <laughs> awesome. No, absolutely. And he, I was, he's like, why can't you be better? That's literally what he said to me. Right. And it's like, yeah. So honestly, when I'm having, you know, if I find myself like bitching right now, like can't right. this client's being like that, I always go back to that. I'm always like, why aren't you better? Right. You're so quick to judge your client. Why aren't you better? I said to myself, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, well, yeah. what you're doing is you're looking at the, it's the same thing, but you're looking at it from a different angle. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is your fault. And you're saying, well, no, I'm a, I can change this myself. It's actually my fault. And that's a lot more empowering than saying, you know, it's your fault yeah. because I can't change you. Yeah. I can't make you sign again, resign, renew your contract, but I can get better. Yeah. I can I can deliver a better product next time. Yeah. And that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Exactly. So shout out to Hoboken Mike, man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolute maniac. I yeah. love this guy. Yeah. Yeah. His brother was the same way, man. I mean, there were different people, but he was very and His brother's name too. was Nicholas Crown. <laughs> <laughs> his brother was Pat, yeah. <laughs> oh, they were awesome, man. So that's fantastic. I learned a ton of that, like- that that, you know, taught me a lot. All right, so who everybody needs to go out and find their Hoboken Mike, <laughs> if you can't. But yeah, but the problem is, is like the people who are who are doing it aren't. You know, they're so busy doing what they're doing. I, you know, whatever. I. But yeah, you, you're on the fringes, right? You're on the yeah. fringes, and then you see inside the Coliseum, and you're like fucking yelling to the guy, and you're saying, "I'll do anything." Here's the best thing you can do: find that guy or that gal or whoever it is you admire the outcome, and just say, "Can I just shadow you for a day or a couple of days? I want to learn your daily habits." Right. Dude, as I think it was John Maxwell said, it was a great line: "The secret to anyone's success is found in their daily habits." Hmm. That's it. It's always there. So if you can shadow the people you admire the most and just watch what they do, and dude, I studied like Mike and Pat, like studied it really everything dude every fucking i would see what type of clothes they were i was like that's what i'm buying everything everything they did that's what the food the places they went to eat the type of food they ate everything i tried to that's why we're wearing the same sweater (laughs) (laughs) i tried to literally embody like everything i could at the time i'm wearing the same pants as you (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah but seriously honestly find somebody and and you know study their daily habits and that's the absolute best surefire way that you're going to do it well, it's 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 also kind of like you don't know anything else, so you might as well start with someone who's doing it right yeah. and try to emulate that and right. see how that works out for you. Seems logical, no? Seems pretty Full logical. Intuitive, yeah. Let, let's take a step back and talk about validation because mm-hmm. um, I get thousands of DMs every week. Hey, Nick, I don't have any money to start. If if maybe if I got some money, I'd be able to start that business I want to start. Let's go through cheap cheap ass ways. Cheap ass ways, everybody, yeah. to validate an idea. Yeah. I have my little mix. Let's let's hear. Yeah. Wh- how would you validate an idea? Yeah. Let's pretend in, in physical space and which we talked about survey 
and maybe something digitally. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's take a service one at first because that's the easiest, right? You've got an idea you want to monetize. We were talking about the agency life, which mm -hmm. is probably the easiest way to monetize and cash flow something that you hopefully are good at, right? right. If you've got an idea, man, go sell it. Mm -hmm. And again, don't sell it doesn't mean you have to go fucking walk into some office on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. with like a notebook and trying to like. But it means move. Yeah. It do means something. Get, get out there. So it's like, okay, you got an idea, right? Right. Um, let's assume you are going to create a uh, agency where you're going to connect low cost but high value designers to companies in the United States, okay. whatever. And you've identified that there's designers in Indonesia, there's designers in Colombia, and there's all these different places. And you're like, you know what, I could create something here. These companies are consistently needing design, whether it's UI UX, whether it's web design, whether it's packaging design, etc. That's always a sticking point that's tough for brands to find like somebody really gets their ethos. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know what, I'm going to arbitrage this, I'm going to go find some people who are billing x an hour, and I'm going to charge them x times whatever an right. hour, right? Right. Okay, cool. So who are your potential clients? Just like real quick off the top of your head, like who they might be? Well, maybe people of e commerce sites, maybe people who are just launching their new products, etc. It's like, okay, let's just start with the latter, right? Well, what are people who are launching the new products doing? They are bootstrapping, they are guerrilla marketing, it's mm -hmm. not that hard to find them. They're all they're, yeah, dying they're on TikTok, they're, they're, on, they're, on they're on TikTok, IG, they're in they're DMing every influencer you can think of trying yep. to get free press. So it's like, okay, maybe I'll just take a look around and see if I can find a few of them. Mm -hmm. And be like, so where do those people hang out? Right. And then try to get yourself as close to that situation as you can. Mm -hmm. Right. Wherever that is. And again, sell it. You sell it. Just get in a room. What do people do when you get into a new circle of people? What does everybody generally do when they're new? They'll be like, oh, hey, what's your name? You name that. Oh, that's very good. Nick, what do you do? Right. That's almost always one of the first, if not the first, it's like the second or third question. Right. So it's like people are just giving you the like the opportunity in the stage right there. And to then walk sell you through it. something. Yeah, yeah, and then sell it. Hey, man, I got this great company, this and that. You know, you kind of fake it a little till you make it. I got this great company. Uh, we connect these super, super talented, but low cost designers with companies here in the US. So it brings their costs down and they right. can just ramp out design more. Um, yeah, and again, if they're like, oh, that's cool, man, good for you. It's like, okay. All right, take that. What right. is that? If they're like, oh, that's interesting. What, what kind of billing? Where right. are they from, et cetera? Okay. But let's describe what you, your party line. When you have your party line, people go, cool. So uh, what's your website? Can I sign up now? Yeah. Like when you have so much fit, mm -hmm. people are opening up their wallet. They're like, sure. hey, man, I've got a sunglass company. Yeah. So that's a whole nother problem, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a whole nother problem. So, so you're basically saying like, well, what do you do if people are like, dude, I need that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let's go. Well, first off, a little mini congratulations, you nailed it, right? right? You found a, at least some degree of a service or product market mm -hmm. fit. So it's like, okay, go ahead and take their information. Hey, look, man, we we are maxed out right now, but the moment I can let a new client, if you give me your information, I can let you know. Right. Done. And then you take those two weeks to freaking rush like and hell to build, build the it. goddamn exactly. thing. Exactly. Go build it. <laughs> exactly. And ideally, yeah. you don't get just one. You get a dozen of this. And ideally, you go to different events or different, put yourself in different situations and environments right. and test your different ideas by selling it, you right. know? Um, and, you know, maybe something that you'll you'll learn in that process is that it's the very act of you selling it. Like you got the gift of gab a little bit and you're like, all right, well, maybe it's not what I'm selling. It's how I'm selling it. Right. That was something that I found with my career is that. I worked on one hand with teams of data scientists. I mm -hmm. work on the other hand with teams that are, you know, m digital marketers types of things or right. CEO of businesses who are running either digitally native or digitally heavy brands, right? Mm -hmm. So I got two very different archetypes of people that I'm dealing with. And what I found is that the data scientists that, who now work for me at the time that I was working with could, I mean, analyze things incredibly, but they couldn't explain it to you. Right. That you'd just be like, Bro, I have no idea what you're talking right. about. Or you need a translator just, to show up it, here and just take care of it's this. It's just like forever. Japanese, you know what right. I mean? You can't even understand it at all. And on top of that, they do it with such like, and I, I hate to say it, it sounds like I'm really throwing them under the bus. They tend to have such like a monotonous way of saying it. They're so uh -huh. monotone. They're just kind of like, yeah, well, you know, you ran this regression analysis and we did find that right. there's a 17.3%. And it's like, okay. Stop. And then you talk to digital marketers who tend to be like front office. Okay, we're going to try this. We're going to try that. But they have no data centric or empirical rationality behind right. those. What I personally found translation, my, that's that's flying by the seat of your pants. With yeah. Decision making. Most of them. Yeah. Right. Which is yeah. cool in the beginning, but not when you're running a hundred and thirty million dollar e-com right. brand. Right? right. And so we come in and be like, wow, you guys haven't made a data driven decision in a long time. It seems where I found my specific skill set was being able to translate that data but at the same time, bring this degree of passion right. to them where it'd be like, okay, we were studying 
New York City iOS using females who are hyper under indexed on your add to cart right mm -hmm. by X percent this and Y. If we try these three tests, I think we've got this degree of probability that we're going to bump that here, mm -hmm. which would put your projected revenue there, mm -hmm. which now changes the whole landscape on what your AOV projections are doing, average order value projections, which means your CPAs are likely to come down. If we miss that, here's the three other tests that we can do right behind them. So like already, I'm not talking like, you know what I mean? They're already getting really into it. They're like, yeah, yeah, we could try that. We could try that. And it's, it's seductive for them. It's right. hypnotic. So my passion for trying to dig in and understand consumer analytics and data, this and that translates into into a sales message and a sales tactic, if you will. And the ultimate sales tactic is you're connecting all of the pieces with return on spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if your fee is X, you're basically saying through this experimentation that I've laid out and basically forecasted the various scenarios, you're gonna get your money back times three. Right. by hiring me right and that is a really really easy fucking sell yeah because if you do something that costs x and it hands someone back 3x mm -hmm. into their pocket the answer to that is usually all right well yeah. i guess we'll give it a shot yeah right yeah and on top of that notice how when i said that i was like if that doesn't work we've got this this and that right. so they're like this is the fucking guy i want on my team right this guy is a already thought of plan a b c and d and iterations of each one he's mm -hmm. excited about it i don't have anyone on my team who's this excited about data and right. testing things and so again i've found that that is a very hypnotic approach that's what works really well for me that's a skill set that i've been able to develop and kind of naturally had to a degree getting right. into this so you know, again, going back to your question, it's like, man, just test the fuck out of it. You know, use your use your inner circle, use your groups, use whatever networking abilities you can to test an idea that you're trying to sell. And don't just test. When I say test it, meaning like try to sell it. Right. And if it feels like you're pushing a little boulder up a hill, course correct. If right. it feels like you're chasing a boulder, we got people being like, hey man, can I? I didn't get your name. I didn't get your number. I'd love to. Do you have a website, et cetera? That's the that's the Dutch you're chasing a little boulder down a hill at that yeah. point. You know. Now you're like, oh shit, I got to catch up. And, and this strategy, you don't need to even know how to use a computer to execute on this strategy. Mm -hmm. You just need to know how to verbalize what it is that you're working on or, yeah. or your vision, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, no money has been spent. No. Nothing has been burned. No bridges have been burned. No. You spent a few hours. You've talked to some people. You probably made a few friends in the process. Yeah. yeah it's magical. Yeah. And there might be some people thinking now will be like, well, what if you pitch somebody and this and that and then you don't do it? Right. Well, How many what, times have I done that in my life? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then it's like, well, aren't you going to have egg on your face? Like, dude, they don't, they're going to forget. If, you know dude, if I mean? you could see the amount of egg on my face from history, I would yeah. be an egg man. I'd yeah. be the... I'd be fully egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A, a like, human egg. Yeah. But like it, it's like, don't, you know, don't, don't get bogged down in those. Like, right. It's, it's just like, you're just making excuses at that point. It's right. like, whatever, man, it's not, not really a big deal. Yeah. And so, okay. So let's pretend that let's pretend I had another, th I wanted to go deeper on something, but let's pretend that you're like, I don't want to go out and talk to people. I mm -hmm. can't do that. That's just not going to happen. Cool. For no whatever problem. reason. Yeah. No problem. All right. So let's, let's play this game. I have, I, and I don't know if I'm, if I absorb this through working with you mm -hmm. through osmosis, but I, my whole thing is do that, but with a cheap little banner ad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. you have your three talking points, create three or four different banner ads and run $5 of ads on Facebook and see which one gets the most clicks. Yeah. So if you're someone who's just like, hey, listen, man, I don't go to Toastmasters. I'm not speaking on stage. Like, yeah. can I do this from the comfort of my own home? The answer is pr probably, and yeah. you probably do it using Canva, Facebook ads, and like, yeah. you know, five bucks. Yeah, a little resourcefulness will go a long way. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, do that, but on top of it, why not just use even the free forums? Like, let's talk about like, like case in point, like Cora is one of the most underutilized mm. growth hacks you can have out there. I mean, we did this, this that's Cora, Cora.com, Q U O R A. .com. Yeah. All right. Which is a glorified Q and A board. And, you know, there's some dumbass questions on there, but there's also some really, interesting questions that yeah. people ask and the answers are really some of the answers are really eloquent and when you read the answers here's what i would challenge you to do is go on to cora type in something you're interested in like i don't know like how do i get a six pack whatever right mm -hmm. and you go look and you'll see some dumbass answers and then you'll see someone who will write an answer and you're like whoa like that dude or gal whoever it is like really knows their shit right really knows their shit they're speaking at a level that is certainly above 
not only the layman, but even those who consider themselves educated. The aficionado level. Yeah. And what yeah. you'll find is take a quick litmus test of your mindset and you, um, I guarantee this, you'll be looking at that person as an expert. Hmm. You will edify that person. You've never met them. You read one little thing. You don't even know if they wrote it, but you're like, John Doe <laughs> right. knows his shit. And then right. you'll find you might think of yourself reaching out to them, et cetera. That is a behavioral psychological phenomena, which basically when you, if my knowledge base on a topic is just slightly above yours, even on the grand scheme of things, if it's nowhere close to expert right. status, I perceive you, you will perceive me as an expert, right. especially if I speak with confidence. Right. So, so, and I'm, I'm digressing a little bit here, but like the point being is you can go on to Cora and test the shit out of selling your ideas right. in the form of questions, because what will happen is let's assume like going back to that example, there's loads of questions on Cora where people are being like, Hey, I'm trying to start a business or, mm -hmm. Hey, I want to do a side hustle or, right. Hey, I want to scale my business. Those are three questions that have lines of affinity, but are different questions. Right. Here's what you do. Create a kick ass answer, mm -hmm. right? That is paragraphs long with data points, like put some effort into it. And right? instantly pole vault yourself to the expert, to the, the expert, expert level, right. and then just change the first sentence. Right. Meaning change the first sentence. So it'd be like, yeah, man, you're, you're, you're trying to create a side hustle. That's totally good. One of the best ways that you could do that right. is by da, 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 insert your answer. Right. Oh man, you're trying to start a business. Well, one of the things you could do, I know that's really challenging is da, 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 you know, do your first sentence, insert right. your big answer. And you can rapid fire, go through hundreds at that point. Right. And the point being is just get in the game, start talking about right. what it is you're passionate about, or in this case, what you're trying to sell yeah. and see if anything bites. And people, because people will come back. I found a business coach at one point through that. I read okay. this woman's answer. I went to it. I ended up going to her site, and she said, "Have you, you seen Billions, the show? Yeah. You know that the the therapist that they have in the office, which is based on a real thing on, I believe, on Stevie Cohen's uh, okay. hedge fund. I believe is a real story where she was an in house therapist to keep the traders just on their game <laughs> all the time. So <laughs> I on, needed one of those back on, in the day. On this woman's website, it said, I forgot her name. Whatever, Jane Doe. It said." Uh -huh consider or refer it said something in a quote like forbes called me the real life okay you know? and i was like that's cool pretty cool well yeah. that's and that's a branding that's a hardcore branding super yeah move right so there. i booked a call with her right, right. that came from cora i read her answer on cora right. so your your test might end up being lead generative yeah uh, totally by accident yeah but uh, if i went on there right now knowing what i know right and i've done this before and i go on cora and anyone who's talking about boosting conversion rate scaling aov how do I, you know, if they're really intricate questions, like how do I get, you know, an order of magnitude increase on the tertiary uh, purchase AOV on my e-commerce brand? And I go in there and put one of my answers in that'll edify me as an expert. Mm -hmm. I can pretty much guarantee that there's some people who are going to respond to that because right. I've done it before. I've done it in these types of forums. I've done it in written forums, et cetera. So it's just a long winded way of saying that, like, even if you have no money for an ad, just right. get on Reddit, get on Quora, get into check or whatever and start talking about your idea. And if no one gives a shit, that's not a great sign. Right. Right. If you start getting some people who ask questions back, they don't have to be like, hey, what's your email? I want to talk to you. But if they, they just ask a question back, that's a good indicator right. that like, you know, You've got something. Upvotes too. You don't. You, Upvotes. You know, yeah. There's all, all different stuff. ways to interact with yeah. with the material. Metrics, yeah. But okay. So to to maybe build like a a principle here, what you're doing, like build a foundation under what we're talking about without using, you know, specific marketing terms and and you know, a, average order value, all these mm -hmm. things that that we're sort of rambling, rolling off here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the idea is like you not rambling. You, you were you were very organized. <laughs> I'm like, all that stupid <laughs> shit you were just rambling about. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy talking about? There's, yeah, there's a lot of acronyms in uh, in digital uh, marketing and advertising and e-commerce conversion, all this good stuff. But anyway, the bottom line is when you're, when you're going out there on the forums, you're going out there, you're talking to people in the bar, the coffee shop, whatever it is, yeah. you're building a map of reality. Yeah. Like, because you actually have no idea what people want if you're sitting at home by yourself in isolation. Yeah. And when you start to uh, bump some molecules around and get into the room and start to, you know, have a little mastermind with people, have coffee, start to uh, shoot the shit with your people in for, uh, forums and yeah. Quora, whatever, you start to go, oh, okay, you're triangulating what, what the hell people actually want. Yeah. So this is the thing that I believe that all successful entrepreneurs have to do and it's and it's also something that's not in a book mm -hmm. it's there's no book that says triangulate and f and bump into shit until yeah. it starts to work yeah but f for me that is the that is the core principle that if you understand that 
you will 100% get what you want out of life. Because if you don't understand that, you will consistently fail and you, it, or, and, or you might get lucky. And if you get lucky, you didn't learn shit. Yeah. So it's almost like winning the lottery. It's, it's an empty, yeah. it's, a, it's actually a curse. Yeah. So bumping around and getting out there, this is building this map of the way that the world works. Yeah. It's making you a wiser person. It's making you a tougher person. And ultimately it's going to reward you, whether that's with financial rewards, with, whether it's with fame, great relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You want to go meet a, a girl, get, get a girlfriend, get a boyfriend, whatever it is that you're looking for, go out and, and start talking to people in the street. Yeah. Because when you're in reading your dating book, you know, dating for dummies 101, right? Yeah. You're not making contact with the real world. Yeah. You're, you're reading like you're, you're, you're playing dress up again. Yeah. You know, you're playing dress up again. So it, it this is like, I made some comment the other, I did some comment on private jet travel on, on social media mm -hmm. and uh, it, 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 it popped off. It, this is just two days ago. It popped off because so, yeah, yeah. I was basically saying like these people, these non business, these non, these people that are so distant yeah. from reality are, 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 you know, renting the jets or it's like, that's like wearing your dad's suit and saying, I'm a businessman. Yeah. It's like going through all the motions of being bus business oriented or understanding time yeah. and the value of time without actually understanding it. Yeah. You're like, I've got the champagne glass. I'm yeah. on the jet, but I don't know how the fuck I got here. Yeah. And, and to me, that's, that's the saddest sight. Yeah. On social media, that's actually the saddest sight, even in social, in out in the wild. Well, it's a complete illusion. It's an illusion. It's a complete fucking illusion. Let's man. talk about it in Miami. Yeah, well, I mean, to take that example, take the jet example. So the last private jet that I was on, uh, we got on. Which one? The one yesterday, the day before. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, boarded at five thirty in the morning, uh, and we were working by five thirty-five. I mean, it was cool as shit. The, the jet pulled up. We were on. We were in the air like right. ninety seconds later. It was cool. It was really intense right we were talking i mean we flew to atlanta and then atlanta to to providence then back to miami and okay. it was non-stop it was a marathon of a work day there was no meaning they were working they were there for a reason on the plane like dude yes the most intense work session you've seen in a long time <laughs> so, yeah, yeah like it was it was my client like this and that it was full blown so like, was there champagne or we land no before we land was there caviar this is getting done this is a discussion no there was none of that i mean <laughs> i'm just checking because people want to know no there was none of that it's like the private jet is a tool to accomplish your goals and a business sense faster it is yeah. not in like of course like yes there's the luxury factor on a on a well, vacation and if the, you're going to put know. a seat on it why not put a leather seat on it for sure and and they, whatever and, and like yes there's definitely people who use these for for recreational purposes and that's all awesome but this but like don't be fooled that like you know these these guys and gals running big companies are using these things to show they're using these things for a efficiency purpose right you know and, and to like, have yield on it 100 hey yeah. i get to do an extra meeting a week that in, extra meeting in two pulls in a hundred thousand united dollars. states up and down the eastern seaboard right right that's a big deal Right. You know, and so, but again, it's like there was, dude, there wasn't a, I mean, it was like intense. There was no, right. there was no, relaxing. there was no crystal being popped. No, there was no crystal being popped. Um, <laughs> you know, our man, who's our, who's our guy? Rick Ross was not on this plane. No. Is that correct? Uh, he was not. Okay. Not on this We plane, have the confirmation <laughs> that Rick Ross was not on this plane. Here's the thing, right? So there was a few other comments that, that flew through, um, into this, this mm -hmm. chat, into the comments on the, on this post. Right. And someone said, you know, not everyone is trying to hustle. Not everyone's just, not, not everyone is a hustler, man. Some people just want to chill and eat the caviar and sip that champagne on the private jet. And my response is, well, I suppose they got that jet by accident. Mm -hmm. Or um, maybe I, I suppose their family got that jet by accident. Yeah. You know what? Their grandfather got that jet by accident. How far up do you have to go to find the person that was hustling? And let's use that word uh, loosely, mm -hmm. working yeah. for it. Yeah, You don't accidentally get a private jet. God, you know, God doesn't just c come down from the heavens and go, whoa, you look like a chill bro. No. Hook this guy up with a, you know, whatever, a leer. Yeah, no. No, not not the way it goes at all. And, and so let me go back to that statement, whoever made that. I mean... It's hard for me to like, like cognitively understand that because to me, that's the equivalent of being like, look, dude, not everybody's trying to kill it at the gym. Some people just want to be shredded all the time, right. and sit on their couch. And it's like, I, huh? I have like legit cognitive dissonance trying to figure that out. Cause it's like, 
the, the whole and like yeah you got inheritance so yeah you got people who kind of got you know in the lucky sperm club and the whole nine but like at the end of the day it's trace like, the line trace the lineage at some point you know papa somebody papa was, was melt schmelting steel or smelting yeah. Yeah, okay. smelting steel. That's yeah. smelt. And by the smelting way, is like a bag you put on a landed, bagel. After they landed, they were probably calculating the cost per hour to be like, how can I cut this down? How can I make this more right. efficient? What can I utilize? Do I really need two people on the plane? Do I really need two people on the plane? Maybe I don't need this big a jet. I know this, you know, so and so likes it, but uh, you know, they're right. constantly trying to get that edge for efficiency, for profitability, to right. maximizing margins. Is it even worth it anymore? I mean, how luxurious does that sound, everybody? Yeah, like that is the, the the furthest thing from luxury. Yeah. Completely. Because that is like taking a picture, going to work. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I'm going to work today. Yeah. I'm fucking cool. <laughs> it's like nobody does that. Yeah. You know, try walking to McKinsey and taking a, a selfie. Yeah. Pretty sure that's not a thing. Yeah. It's, and it's, I hope it doesn't become a thing. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I am not following <laughs> you if you are a consultant <laughs> taking selfies going to work. It's it's funny. I mean, this is, you know, I, I watch. I'm not. I'm not that active on social uh and by not active i'm not active at all it's okay. um, it's i okay. follow i follow obviously my rest easy friends. my son I follow <laughs> yourself but i don't i don't comment i don't post and like trust me there's more than enough that in the traditional era of social media of like showing the flash that i i could show that i deliberately choose not to and right. it's like it's it's like you gotta check your mindset really hard if you're a millennial or Gen Z, seriously, because the delta between the perceived reality of those who have made it versus where you are is so fucking skewed and right. far off from what it actually looks like. In, re in, in reality. reality. And like, don't get me wrong, you and I will go out on a Friday, Saturday night for a guy's night and have an awesome, and be those guys with the car, you know what I mean? Right. With the cars and the, and the whole nine and this and that, and everybody's like, oh wow, look at, and it's like, yeah, but you didn't see the 82 fucking hours I put in this week of work. And oh, by the way, even though I'm partying tomorrow night, I'm at the gym 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, right. hangover or not. Right. And like, this show doesn't stop. You know what Ever. I mean? No. And it's like, cool, we're going to go out Saturday night. Sundays are work days. Right. I mean, my schedule is, it's, it's, we're filming this on Friday, right? It's, I don't know what time is it. Let's hear, yeah, let's hear your schedule. I've been, you know, I've, I don't, I, I usually do Monday through Friday. I will be starting at the gym in the morning, right? So I'll be getting up at six, seven. I'll be starting at the gym. And you can thank I, me for that, by the way. Yeah. Thanks for that. I used to do it in the night. And then uh, I will be working by somewhere between 7 30 and 8 30, depending on the day. Mm -hmm. Usually call it just eight. I will go straight till 8 p.m. 12 hour sprint every single day. I have breakfast on the phone. I have lunch on the phone. I have dinner on the phone. Right. Then I'll take a break. So no, no, uh, no Milos table side bronzinos at ever, any point ever. Right. Never go out to lunch unless you have a, have a Purpose. strong opportunity right. that there is a client you can win or there's a deal you can close or an investor you can woo or whatever. Right. But at, otherwise I have a strict, no, no, no meetings, none of that stuff in right. the middle of the day, unless it is hyper focused and productive. Right. So I'll go straight till 8 PM. Then I'll take a break for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, et cetera, just hang. And then I'll always put that last sprint in before going to bed. Right. Like as an example, one policy is the um, Sam Walton policy, or uh, Walton policy, right? The founder of Walmart yep. who had the empty desk policy. He would never leave his office on a day until mm. every, and this was pre, you know, email, right. every letter was replied to right. in writing, empty desk. So I have an empty inbox, in, inbox policy, right? And it's not just inbox, it's my, because I have a lot of clients, it's, it's I would 70 something I, Slack channel. I have seen it's, his, I have seen his Slack channel. It looks like, it's like the main, it's like the, in the matrix freezing. when the fucking, the guy has the computer and he's just it's like, just blah, like blah, 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 blah. That's yeah, your yeah, Slack. Yeah, I know it's intense. I don't wish it upon any, but, anybody. But here's the thing, even when I'll go into a meeting and I'll have sometimes hundreds of messages, I'll right. never let a day go by that I don't go through every single client. And not only every client, I'll go through my, I've built a big team now. I'll go through their messages. Right. So that takes an hour and a half. I'll do it every day. Right. That is, if I could, I mean, if you could take one little tactical skill out of this conversation that I promise you will help, have an empty inbox policy. Right. Just do it. Go through your text messages, go through your WhatsApp, go through your emails and go through your Slack or whatever, you know, mediums you're using for communication every day before you go to bed. And if for whatever reason something happens, you absolutely can't just do it first thing in the morning. But generally speaking, you do it every night. Right. That alone will put you in the top 5%. I know it sounds thorough. Ridiculous. You're thorough, extremely thorough. Yeah. That's what you're, you're saying. Be extremely thorough and own every single area of yeah. your business. 
Yeah, yeah, but it's so easy though to just like look through the inbox and it's like, oh, I missed that. Oh, I, mi I mean, every single day I missed an email, I missed this and that, but I don't let the day go by. Every day I get to it. Right. So, so, so it's like, okay, so that's like a typical day. Friday night, I deliberately will unplug, right? So after this, I don't know what time it is, 4.35 right now. Friday, I'll go back, I'll put a few more hours right. in. The Ace of Spades unplug. comes out. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, but it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> so we go out tonight, like, yeah, I, you know, right. it'll it'll look like that, you know, and then people will right. just see that. It will, like, it will look guy. like a rap video. Everybody <laughs> yeah. who's like worried that like we don't ball out. It, we do ball out. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, Tomorrow I'll do my best, depending on the weather, to take time off. I'll right. do my best. The problem is right. it's I'm so ingrained in this life now, and it's so me, that it's really hard for me to legitimately unplug. Right. Like the beach vacation. Well, I, I want to I finish this out because let me, let me finish this out. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. What you're describing is a really regimented really challenging lifestyle and mm -hmm. that's what's afforded you to be able to scale out the agency as mm -hmm. fast as as you have mm -hmm. right and so you have all the toys to show it you have you have the lifestyle to show for it but nobody's I just want to go back to the private exam the private jet example nobody is shirking their responsibilities nobody's fucking off nobody's living this fairy tale instagram life guys yeah. what you see on instagram is is finely tuned marketing mm -hmm. I, and and this is why i think i'm so absolutely terrible at at doing it the lifestyle stuff it just is, it seems absurd mm -hmm. because it's a lie it's a complete lie mm -hmm. if you see me chilling sitting back like it's probably a lie mm -hmm. because i'm never doing that yeah you know or, or or maybe i should just post once a week on fridays when i you know they let the dogs out of the house <laughs> like you know yeah and you wouldn't yeah. want to follow that so like Anyway, I just think it's really important to clear that up because what we're doing, what, what's happening on social media when you say, I don't know what Gen Z, I don't, I don't know what the, that, it feels like that involves math. Gen Z, who, who, I don't <laughs> know who's what, at, yeah. but, but basically they're people that grew up with Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's Gen Z or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. If you grew up with Instagram, you have a skewed sense of reality because you must think that wherever you're not, People are in Ibiza, people yeah. are in Mykonos, people are, there's a fire dancer everywhere for some reason. Yeah. Like people are wearing white linen, sick pants for some, like all the time. Yeah. Dude. I know. Who are those people? I want to meet them because yeah. I've never met them before. Well, and some of them really do live that life, but then the bill comes at the end of the night. And then and we have to pay for me it. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> I'm like the only guy who didn't take a picture. I'm the, I'm only, the only guy, guy who has, I have like 400 Instagram <laughs> followers. These cats got whatever they have. And it's like, everyone's like, yo, you got it. You and got like, this one? Once again. Once again. Through. Yeah, that's You're not happened. even wearing linen pants. But I, I, but I know it's coming. <laughs> I know it's, yeah, I'm not even wearing this too. <laughs> I, You're I not even wearing coming. a cowboy hat. I know it's coming. And you are getting stuffed with the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. All right. So, so uh, this is just another rehash of the way you think it looks versus the way it actually looks. Correct. And the more comfortable you get with that, I think the happier you're going to be. Yeah. Because when you're in the trenches and you're going like, God damn, at what point am I just going to be chilling on yeah. the beach sipping a fucking um, spicy margarita? You're yeah. like, never. Yeah. Never. Or when you or when you decide to, hey, I'm going to sell this business and you get a slug. And yeah, this happens. Right. This happens. OK. And then you get the slug and you go on the beach for a week and you're like, well, bored I'm, shit. you're bored as shit because yeah. you're one of the people that is capable of building a business of that size and magnitude yeah. and that organization. So you're telling me you're going to go to Tulum yeah. and sip a freaking spicy margarita. You're going to be like, OK, well, I'm going to kill myself if I stay here. So, uh. Let's go. Let's you go. won't. You won't. And there, there's two things. So I almost want to go back to this this guy or gal, whoever I'm assuming it was a young guy who sent you that message, right? right? So it's like, look, man, you are. I, I understand where you're coming from, right? So first of all, like I get it, right? It'd be super cool to have the the this and the that without the the work that goes into it. And I know this sounds cliche, but I can tell you, in my relatively short career thus far, and to whatever degree of success you want to call it, mm -hmm. like by far the joy is in the process. I mean, dude, it is, I have this weird thing. So I used to be, to, it used to be really tiny. Like I didn't, I was like 155 pounds, right? I was probably 30 pounds smaller than I am right now. 
I was tiny. I didn't have an ounce of muscle on me, right. and I tried for two years. And if you're just listening to this, this uh, Ned Ned McPherson's built like a brick shit house. Everybody, <laughs> all right? This guy, like, if this guy knocks on your door, you are you are not opening it. Okay, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. All right. So I I I honest I I worked for two years, uh, going to the gym six days a week and put one pound of muscle on. Really? Yeah. Two years, man. Two years. How? What do we attribute that? To. that failure to well two main things that i had wrong right and secretly i'm like yeah to, uh, tell me what fruits and vegetables you were what, eating what, and my my uh, business partner at the time was was he was a pretty jack guy you know this and that he had already figured it out and i don't know why he didn't tell me sooner but eventually he was like hey look man we got to take a look at your diet and then we have to take a look at how much weight you're pushing and i changed two things relating to the literally the amount of weight that i was pushing and okay. the rep count and then i started tracking and literally writing down my macros and i am not exaggerating that i got onto a specific plan this is two years i gained one pound and i think in 90 ish days maybe 120 i put on gosh it was i want to say almost 20 pounds of muscle really everybody except my business partner this is back in the day happened to be my roommate too right. Everybody was like, dude, he's doing roids. Right. Every fucking person. Right. Including my closest friends were like, you no one changes that that quickly. Right. And I was like, I really appreciate that because it goes to show that's validation how much is working. Right. All of this to be said, that was one of the most euphoric experiences I've ever gone through in my huh. life. That 90 to 100 day window was, dude, incredible. The feeling to work that hard with no progress and then to Whoop. make that change and to see the results. Dude, it's so bad that I have this weird thing now where I'm kind of like, this is going to sound super fucked up. I'm kind of like envious a little bit of people who are like out of shape uh -huh. because I'm like, dude, if I woke up in your body, I know exactly the formula yeah. tomorrow morning that the next six months are going to be ridiculous. Just exciting. game changing yeah. results. Every girl who's denying you all of a sudden starts taking a second look. This right. and that like and dude, it changes everything, by the way, when you get in shape, it changes everything. We're going to go down a rabbit hole here, but like. For, like the girls saying, yeah, that's all there. But dude, the way you're treated by other males, right? When you get in shape, was night and day difference, right. bro. Like night and day difference. And so even more so than when I built up a, a you know sizable net worth, like right. that pales in comparison to when I physically got in shape. Interesting. So again, back to this, you know, whoever this was who said this to you, don't rob yourself of that, right? Dude, don't like it's the best part is right. making that journey, making that product. Dude, you're going to love it. I'm telling you, it's going to be the greatest thing you ever do. Right. And it will pave the way into all these other things you're going to accomplish in life. And you will look back and have nothing but gratitude for that struggle. So it's like whether you want to call it hustle or struggle or whatever, it's like, dude, that's the best part of living. Right. You know, and it's like, don't rob yourself of that. So. Well, and it, it's it's really not optional either. Like you either you either go through this gauntlet yeah. that we call life and come out stronger and fucking wearing a helmet like with like a like antlers on it, you yeah. know, and covered in blood, yeah. or you you what cower Damn. and everyone forgets about you. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> God, it That's sucks terrible. Talking about like imagine realizing that in your life. Well, we know people right that that either hit you know the genetic lottery or they hit the you know, actual lottery and some mm -hmm. windfall they get yep. hit by a fucking you know they get hit by a car or something and mm -hmm. it, those people's lives are destroyed yeah because they haven't gone through the pain yeah to build the muscle or the mental muscle to to execute on on what it's like to have those things those yeah. resources totally Totally. And I'm telling you, we're having this conversation on a Friday. I've had a rough week, bro. I've had a rough business week. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it, it like it's, a, it's actually a great position to be talking about this right now because mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I mean, we had a ton of success last year. I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, the business has really scaled a lot. But yeah. like in this moment, you know, I'm jamming with you right now. I am Terminator mode as soon as we leave here. Right. hundred percent, you know, right. and again, I'm getting all sorts of whatever. I just last night, someone reached out, dude, I heard about your success. This is so awesome. Like, Da, 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 right. that you know my high school wants to do a thing and it's like that's great I, uh, cool but i'm still in the struggle and will always be because right. i this is who i define myself as now right and it's like i've set new standards for my team and for the company and for my clients and the performance we have with them and frankly i set the bar on jan one and we're nowhere even close yep we're nowhere even close even though we're 10 times the company we were two and a half years ago right. we're nowhere even fucking close so that's all i'm looking at and that's all i'm thinking of so right. i am there's Back. no, you haven't made it. No, you haven't, there's no, you're not you sit, yeah. you're sitting 
but this is important because it, yeah. people don't understand this. This right? is how it's thinking, right? And I'll still go out tonight and I'll right. have a good time. But like, dude, it's it's you know, I'll take a, an easy a little bit tonight for dinner, this and that. But it's straight. Andrew said he was paying tonight. Actually, so we're good. <laughs> it's about time someone <laughs> covers the bill. But thanks, so, producer Andrew. There's one other point I do want to I want to comment on this because you made up a you brought up a really good point, which was like you know, hey, you have this big slug, you sold your company, whatever, you go to the beach, this and that. Here's how I can prove to you you won't do that unless okay. it's a freak thing where you sell your company is, um, you know, Atomic Habits is my favorite book. Yep. And by the way, anyone listening, if you got one book, you're going to read, read Atomic Habits. I'm Besides mine when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we'll promote it. It'll be a close yeah. second after yeah. that. But it's, uh, but, but Atomic Habits is brilliant. That changed so much for me on how I perceived uh, not goal thinking. Mm. I completely eliminated all goals systems entirely. Thinking. I went completely systems thinking. But he had, you know, James Clear, the author, had a couple really profound statements in there, like a number of them. Some of them, are, as an example, is your goal isn't to run a marathon, he said, or your goal isn't to become, I think it's like a best-selling author. Right. Your goal is to become a runner. Right. Identify the, with that yes. thing. The marathon is just one point on the arc of progress. That's right. it. So here's the thing is if your goal isn't to make a million or 10 million or a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars right. or whatever it is, your goal is to become an entrepreneurial hustler. Right where all of that money and all that stuff is the byproduct on who you are and who you are is a function of your daily habits. Right. Right. And that is it, man. That's well, it's, it. And it's empowering because it gives you some, it gives you somewhere to start. Yeah. If you're not starting from zero, you go, okay, well, let me take this big ass thing, chop it up into little bite size pieces. I mean, I do this. I still, I still do this on a, I, my, my spreadsheet that I send. If you sign up to my newsletter, you get a spreadsheet. Yeah. It's not the sexiest spreadsheet you've ever seen, but what it does is it takes big goals and chops them up into little, little tiny little nuggets that achieved. you can knock out in, in five days. It's you start on Monday mm -hmm. and you knock it out on Friday. Yeah. And if you didn't knock it out on Friday, you ding yourself with a bad score. Yeah. It's basically like atomic habits meets Google yeah. sheets. Yeah. Perfect. No, <laughs> right. there you go. But, but it's all for the for point of changing habits. Right. Yeah. So, so, so again, to this guy, you know, to the, to the mindset out there, that's like, oh, you're going to sell your company, have this big hit, right. which you put the time in, it'll happen. Uh, and then you're going to be on the beach. That's the equivalent of like someone who's been working to win the, the uh, run a marathon and they win. And it's like the next day they hang up the shoes and now they're just like, you know, right. getting fat. It's like, no dude, they're back running the next day. That's who they are. It's in every essence of their being. Yeah. So again, to the point is it's like, if you don't want to hustle, don't hustle but like you're just throwing away your opportunity. And to me, that's your only point in life is to maximize the opportunities that are given to you and to fulfill what your potential is, right? And it's right. like, there's no other way to do that than hustle. There's no, like nobody on the planet who's ever, who's ever done anything of really great significance did so without some form of mental or physical- Sweat. Thing. Yeah, hustle, yeah, yeah. right, so. He, and, and let's let's push it a step further well, well, well let's use m my definition the point the wh why you're on planet earth is you're you're here on planet earth to make someone else's life easier because if you can make someone else's life easier you've created value right mm. and if you can do that at scale you're going to get a ton of little social credits that we call currency money deposited in your account right with nroc yeah. what are you doing yeah. you're creating value for a lot of big companies at, at scale mm -hmm. and the amount of value that you created maybe five years ago, now it's even more. Right. So you can charge more for that because you're creating so much more value. Totally. So it's really, fr it's really freaking simple. Yeah. When is. you boil it down to the, to first principles to use the, you know, the nerdy Silicon Valley language, it's just like, w all you're doing is trying to help people. And if you can help a lot of people, you're going to probably get paid a lot more money or receive some yeah. some form of rewards right um and if you're not helping people then yeah fuck off yeah and helping people is a you know i gotta hustle to get there well helping too. people yeah. isn't easy because here's the, here's here's the ultimate thing and this is what i learned with my my music career it's yeah. like i don't get to decide how i'm gonna help you you do yeah so if you don't want to hear me sing or play on stage or fucking uh, po write poetry or, or do whatever gymnastics then I have to either change or not be rewarded. Yeah. And, and that's your call and you society, the gr greater people out there. So this is where iteration comes from. Yeah. You iterate your way to success because what you're trying to do is say, where do I go where the most people are going to clap for me? Mm -hmm. And when the most people clap for you, hang out in that space because good shit is about to happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look, social media is so, is so, 
so very interesting to me because the ultimate A-B test is going viral now. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, that's true. It's 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 the ultimate A-B test. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. Uh, going viral on TikTok. What TikTok is, is it's, it's an A-B test machine. It finds an audience, but decides who likes it rapidly, faster than anything ever before. Yeah. It's a huge mathematical conundrum to do this as yeah. fast as they've figured it out. Long story short is whatever it is that you do, if you have the sickest tennis serve, if you fucking sing while you hit the tennis ball, po post it on, on TikTok to see the reaction, right? Yeah. Because you're basically saying, do people care about this weird yeah. thing that I do? And then o over time, you just lean more into that thing. Yeah. Selling before you build. Yeah. Certainly, certainly me making uh, funny faces into my camera on TikTok is not something that I woke up, uh, was born to do. Mm -hmm. I said, well... All right, I do, I'll talk about some digital marketing hacks. I'll talk about some digital nomading hacks. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll do some fitness stuff because I kind of know about that. And I'm like, all right, anyone can talk about that. Mm -hmm. But what is something that I am interested in that I'm the only one who can talk about it? Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do this thing called Rich versus Really Rich. There's this weird little thing that I pick up on, and I'm going to do a little skit. Yeah. And I promised myself I would never, ever do a skit on social media. <laughs> now you're the king of skits. And I'm like the skit guy. Yeah, I'm like trying <laughs> not, awesome. I'm trying to like be like, yeah, we're, that was cool that I did that, but right. come over here, we're doing some new stuff, yep. right? Yep. So so that's the result of iteration. Yeah, totally. It's not the result of genius or luck or fucking, it's just like, if you keep knocking over plates, you're eventually gonna like knock over the right one. Yeah, yeah, but you put it out there, right? And you, you right. know, quote, went to sell it and the market really bought it hard. Right. And then continue to buy it hard, and the market was screaming, "Give us more!" You know, and you had, and you now they're like, "Please stop! <laughs> Just give us a podcast <laughs> for the love of God! <laughs> Do something else!" No, but I honestly, I love the me the message of the rich versus really rich thing is is awesome, though. You know what I mean? And it really is is nothing could be more aligned with the truth. You know, which again, there's this misnomer, and especially when you're dealing with people who are still on the up and up, and they kind of have this misconception of the the wealthiest people as as stomping on the heads of others and right. this and that. And it's like, dude, it's not even remotely how it is. They right. are incredibly gracious. Usually, they are you first. They are because again, they've gone through so much shit you can't even imagine. Because I look at how much shit I've gone through right. at this point, which. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And now I look at people who are a hundred times my, and I'm like, I don't yeah. even want to know bro. What, like, what your life I looks yeah, like. I don't even want to know, right. you know, like the, 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 you know, what you've had to go through. So right. it's like, they value that introduction to you. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's almost like it comes full circle. Like when you start out, you, you know, you kind of have this genuine interest in other people mm -hmm. and you kind of stick to your morals and you stick to your principles. And then as you get a little coin and as you get a little success, you get a little cocky, you get a little arrogant and right. you drift away. And then when you really hit it, you come right back to where you started, right. which was this, you know, you get knocked back into line. Yeah, that's you're a good, like, better way to put it. You're a jackass. Yeah. You're a jackass. Yeah. Yeah. Get back in line. You get knocked back into line. And right. like, to, you know, sometimes we, physically by force. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're, you're the jackass in the bar. Keep that up. Yeah. See what in, happens. My, in my case, it was financially going back to how we started this conversation, which is like, you know, I had all this stuff popping off and all of a sudden then we're going to these. Now we're getting a deck of thousand dollars a month, which for me at the time, I was like, this is crazy. You know, yeah. it was just me at the time. I couldn't believe it. You know, and the company I'd started with my business partners, like we were, we were, you know, paying ourselves okay. Like it wasn't bad, but like now it was considerably more mm -hmm. like, you know, two to three times more on the side gig. So I, you know, got all aggressive and I don't want to say I got cocky. I didn't get cocky. I got foolish mm -hmm. and man, did I, did I put myself in a tough Foolish spot. with re reinvesting in the business, with going, with buying a fancy car. What, we're foolish with what? Yeah. Uh, some expenses in the business that I never should have made that I was like, well, this is what people do. They reinvest in their business and they pay for this new office space mm -hmm. and they sign this six month lease contract. Starting to play and, business guy yeah, a little bit. And there was like the coolest new building over here that, that had this beautiful view of Miami. And I took the corner unit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like five months into this thing. But again, I had so much profit. I'm like, yeah, whatever. We could afford it. Yeah. yeah and then I lost half my revenue. 
because two of my clients Turned at out. no fault of my own, really just, they had, there was, you know, without getting into their business, what happened, but like, you know, just kind of coincidentally lost them. And then I'm starting to get underwater, but I'm like, I'll get out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get out. And now I'm using the biz Amex to cover things. And before I know it, I'm, you know, 70, 80, 90 K and dead. Yeah. I don't, maybe it was more at the time. So 2017 was a real, like come to Jesus moment for me. Right. That was a, that was a brutal year. That was my abyss. Right. And I, and I fought and clawed and somehow survived the year. And New Year's Eve on 2017, I made a pact with myself that I was going to work every day in 2018. Okay. And I was going to push the envelope. And I did. I didn't take one day off. No Saturdays, no Sundays, nothing. I didn't take Christmas off, 4th of July, nothing. Right. Every single day. And like, don't get me wrong. I flew to see my family on Christmas. They, I'm originally from Boston. I went back up there. Right. But like, you know, I was in the morning working. Then we did like the breakfast thing. I went back to working. Then we yep. did, you know, present whatever. It went back to working. So like, it was still a work you, day. you dressed up like Santa Claus, <laughs> went back to work. <laughs> it was still on my the normal, The yeah, normal yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 But, but point being is that was a really critical year because I was like, if I fail and I go down in flames, at least I can say right. there was nothing more I could have done. Right. I pushed it as hard as you, and I lost a lot of friends. I totally burnt the relationship that I was in that, that right. crashed and burned. I, you know, I remember it was one of the only time in my life, a buddy of mine from California had come out and I, um, after the work day, I'd shot over to the beach to see him for, for a drink. And we were like 10 minutes of conversation. He was like, dude, you seem awful. Mm. And I was like, nah. And he's like, dude, you're off. like, what's going on? And I was like, well, guess this is getting worse than I thought. Well, yeah, yeah. Turns out I'm only 248 days into my 365 <laughs> yeah, yeah. of just doing other my work. But I did it. Th I well, did it. But this is in my. So this is in the in the show notes. Right. Like a nonstop hustle versus what I would say you have now, which it's is quite different. Yeah. Quite different. Right now, you have said to me at one point when you caught me doing the 365 mm -hmm. fight psychopath fucking work thing when yep. we met. You're like, you know, I don't know if I do that. Yeah. Let's, let's break, let's find out where the, where sure. we should live in this. Yeah. Thing. I mean, it was, you know, it was one of the greatest decisions I never want to do again, mm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I am eternally grateful I did it. I did it first off. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss a day. I did it. Um, the business majorly turned around. Okay. 2019 was a banner year. We blew up, right? It was a ton more success. Um, and my personal lifestyle started to take off shortly after that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. I can tell you right now, it is 100% not the optimized way to work okay. or live. Absolutely yeah. not to those listening. I would say, depending on your tolerance for pain is mm -hmm. try it. Don't, you don't have to go a year like I did, but try it to push the envelope. And I'm glad I did it because I know what it's like to go full fucking tilt. Dude. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's like nothing else matters right. for a long period of time. Right. Yeah. And I'm really glad I did it because now I know what that feeling's like. And now I can weigh myself when I'm getting too close to it and right. I can pull back a little bit. But my optimum zone now is about 80 percent of that. Well, right. And we're going to pull in Pareto's P's because then it's where we're thinking about 80, 20. Like, yeah. do you have to work seven days a week? You could work six days a week. Yeah. And and maybe get most of the yield yeah. from, from that. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of how I am. Like, I, I don't want to say, <laughs> I don't really take a day off, but I take like a half day off. And for me, it's, it's, it's like, if I get it, if I just can get it, I take it. Yeah. So this is, this is some weird thing. Like, if you operate on the weekends mindset, you're probably not an entrepreneur. Cause like sometimes my weekend might be like a Tuesday. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't have anything to do today. I'm guess mm -hmm. am I allowed to leave yeah. my office? <laughs> and then I like, I'll do so. I'll like try to be a normal person. I'll walk, like I'll go to like the design district and just like walk around. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's luxury. Yeah. Don't even buy anything. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> the air is just so fresh. Yeah. Oh, God. Man. Yeah. Buy $500 sneakers. I'll never wear. Right. Um, from uh yeah but uh, this this is i i think there's a, a di diminishing returns mm -hmm. because at some point the human body the mind dude there's no way that you were functioning at optimal headspace for 365. no, no it was it was a it was a your was zombie a personal you had to be zombie mode yeah. at one point yeah for sure yeah. totally and again i burnt like every relationship man you know what right. i mean it was not good times 
from some respects, it was ultimately what saved my business on the other hand. Right. So priority. Yeah. Which was that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a big believer on like testing limits. So I tested the limit. I know what that red line looks like now yeah. and I know where to, where the sweet spot is. Right. You know what I mean? The red line. Yeah. We're always trying to see where that, where I'll that red still line touch is. it though. I'll still hit the red line for like a week at a time. Right. I mean, you will too. I mean, we both will, but it's right. like short lived now. Right. You know? Yeah, my December was was full red line. Basically, I was transitioning from from having this this lower and lower skit output for, for of TikTok, uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. whatever. Transitioning to doing this new format. Uh, by the way, guys, this format started as an experiment where we had no idea if we were going to launch the podcast. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, you want to talk about taking chances and bumping into reality, like you, off off camera. Uh, producer Andrew is is in college and just like approaches me is like, I'll just do anything. Cause like, I just want to learn. Yeah. That was his, that was his pitch. And I'm like, well, that's kind of exactly what I need right now. Mm -hmm. I was like, can you just sit down and be a podcast host? And he was like, yeah, sure. Can we write questions? <laughs> I was like, yeah. So we wrote questions and Killing he just, it, just sits down. I look at the screen. I'm like, this is the sickest podcast, man. This is amazing. Yeah. And we look professional. Yeah. You look like a professional podcast host. The funniest thing about, uh, him jumping in is like, dude, I change anything. I get a haircut. People are like, you got your haircut. I changed my glasses. You got, no one said anything. They were like, oh, I guess that's just the podcast host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like, it was just natural. It was this beautiful, magical thing. And I was like, okay, that was so hard. But oh my God, I see the promised land right now because, you know, anyone who makes content knows that sitting down and filming a podcast is, is not an easy task, but mm -hmm. you can build a team behind it. You can't build a team behind creating one uh, one to one unique skits every single week that you know eventually you guys are going to be like okay dude, what else do you do nick you <laughs> what know? else you got what else you got come on <laughs> there's got to be something else that you do yeah, yeah um it started as a complete iteration now i lost my train of thought we were we were talking about like if you can grind non-stop and then redlining for too long right kind of where that sweet spot is and, so, yeah. you, so i redlined it for december that involved working through christmas like going going to dinner christmas eve christmas going to lunch Christmas day and then just saying like, Hey, I, I got to get out of here guys and going back and working yeah. because at the end of the year, I wanted to say that the podcast was live. There's a whole team behind this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meaning I don't have to edit this after we leave. Right. Mm -hmm. This whole, this whole thing is, is, is relatively seamless. It'll, it'll, we'll get there. Um, and in addition to that, my AI company is in the right place. Okay. So those two things had to be sealed before I, Boop. Like yeah. before the, you know, I pulled out the Ace of Spades and flipped on the uh, the Rick Ross album because yeah. I was I will tell you this I would not be letting it loose on New Year's Eve if this wasn't all had a fucking bow on top of it by yeah. December thirty first I just wouldn't do it yeah because you stop and you take a break and you put your knee down when the job is done mm -hmm. whether it jives with a holiday or not yeah so start with the book read the book first because that book you can just the 15 bucks yeah most of us got the 15 bucks and after you get the book go find your freaking jersey mike yeah jersey mike go <laughs> find your hoboken mike yeah. <laughs> yeah all right dude thanks for coming that's a pod man thanks for having me it was awesome oh yeah yeah thank you brother